What I'm going to show today may not be the fastest way to collect engineering materials. However, it is a lot more fun than endlessly running loops at Dab's Hope or grinding high-grade emissions until your eyes pops out. Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. Game Glass allows you to take control of your ship from a tablet or a phone. But not only that, it can also give you on-screen information about systems, targets and the market around you. So gone are the days where you have no room for all your key bindings or you have to alt-tap out of the game just to look up market data. Follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free. If you like it and want more shards of features, you can either buy them individually or subscribe to Glass Pass. Use offer code DTA and get 5% on any purchase. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. Today is just going to be some fun and games. We're going to have a look at the updated Blunderbuss build where I'll try to make it into a more material collecting kind of ship. And yes, you can do it in many other ships and you could potentially do ships that are even better or faster than the build I have here. But this build is a ton of fun and that's all this thing is really about. It is making something that's extremely fun to fly while still being relatively effective at collecting engineering materials by shooting down NPCs. First, I want to show you how this thing flies and what you use it for. And secondly, we're going to have a look at the build itself so you can go and replicate it yourself. So when it comes to gathering engineering materials with a ship like this, it's very important that we are able to select our targets and that we can choose who we're going to fight and we're only going to fight them one at a time. If we go into a site where they will aggress us, then we're going to get into trouble. That leaves us with two options, that leaves us with the pirate invasions and it leaves us with the hazardous resource extraction sites. The hazardous resource extraction site, you can find it pretty much any planet with a ring, almost. The pirate invasions, however, you have to go in here to the map, go over to uh, to the state tab, make sure you filter the system by state, and just quickly deselect everything here, like so, and then choose, oh, didn't get that one, then choose civil unrest, you can see right here in Shinrata Deshra, there's not that many of the systems around, but as you begin to scroll around, they do pop up here and there. So they're not too uncommon, not the most common state. But let's see, we have one down here. Fly around the system, and when you get rid of a thousand light years of one, you will see this pirate activity detected with a threat level attached to it. This comes in three different threat levels, five, six, and seven. Number five will have a majority of heavily armed ships, but very few will be engineered. Threat level 6, well, you will have more of them being engineered. And in this one that we have here, you will have most of the ships being engineered. And there's also a chance that they will spawn in a pirate-controlled capital ship. Once in the instance, begin to look for a target. Right now, there's a odd lack of anacondas in here right now. But finally, an anaconda spawned. So this build relies on the scooter scramblers to take down the shields. These are fixed laser weapons. So we're going to try to stay behind him as I'm doing right now. And notice when I attack him here in a second how the other ships in the instance don't really care much while we fight him. And we can just fight this guy alone. So let's just put some pips around here. Forgot to put pips on square shields. We want a little bit of engines. Well, get back in position on this guy. And let's open up. And he's boosting immediately. He's trying to get. So we're going to just try to stay behind him for as much time as we can. It's slightly outside our range now. We have extremely long, short range on these weapons. That's the only downside. We're just going to keep trying to stay out of his line of fire. To so work our way in closer to him. There we go. And just slowly we're going to grind down his shields. Again, trying to stay out of his line of fire as much as we can. And if we begin to get in, just fire off a boost. And get in behind him again. As soon as his shields go down... Going to switch over to the multi cannons and the pacifiers and begin slowly working on his hull. And gone is the anaconda. Get your collectors out, open up your cargo holds, move over to the materials, let your collector do your thing while you begin to look for your next target. As you can see, even an not that experienced combat pilot, and especially not with fixed weapons, can comfortably take down engineered anacondas even though I started with half shield. So let's take a look at the build. I will of course be linking it in the video description and also over on the commander's toolbox. There'll also be a link for that in the description where I collect all my different ship builds. First of all, the ship here is built on an Alliance Chieftain. When it comes to the hard points, in the three small hard points, I've fitted Kutu Scramblers. 
They are faction specific module, meaning you have to go through the four weeks of power play to get them and you have to sign up with Archon in order to get these. These are really, really short range burst lasers that do insane amount of damage to shields, even though they're only small sized. They're fixed only, but as you can see here, their armor piercing is one, meaning they're going to do next to no damage to armor. Um, so don't bother trying to use these against armor and I've seen people go through who to try and make this work against armor. Forget it. It's much better just fitting something like the pacifiers I have up here. But we have three critical scramblers down here, which is short ranged and oversized. Short ranged because, well, we effectively we only look like 100 meters from 600 to, uh, to 500 meters effective combat range. So and we get like 75% boost into damage. Oversized, of course, just for even more damage. So you can see we get an 80 plus to damage at a, what, 50, almost 50 DPS. That's pretty much the same you'll be able to get out of a huge um laser of the same uh, same type definitely really really high damage weapons especially of course if you can keep people close because if you can't keep them within those 500 meters you're not going to do any damage for the medium hard point i have a multi cannon and we only have this here just so we can get corrosive shell of course since we're going to be using pacifiers they don't have the best armor piercing in the game so we're going to be using corrosive shell to kind of soften up their armor a little bit Oversized because, well, why not get a little bit extra damage out of them while it's there anyway? I mean, we are going to be shooting at hull, so they're going to be quite effective. But the main reasons why this is here is because of that corrosive effect. For the large hard points, I have two pacifier frag cannons. These are, again, power play weapons, and these come from Zachary Hudson. These, again, works much the same as normal frag cannons, only that they have a much tighter spread, meaning that you don't miss as easy because the, the shot goes all over the place. You will miss with half your fragments. Much tighter spread, much more accurate than uh, the normal fragmentation cannons. And these can also do a ton of damage when you get up close and personal and begin to uh, to hit the hole with these. Both of these has been modified with oversized weapons as well as screening shell. Screening shell reduces the reload time here as you can see with 50%, meaning we can get that next salvo off really, really quickly. And of course, oversized for the additional 75% damage. Utility mounts, pretty boring. It's all shield boosters and all of these are engineered with resistance augmented force block. We're going for a very, very resistant heavy build because we want to get as much effective shield regen as possible. Because after we're taking down the, the ship, we'll probably be on low shields. And we can then sit, just put four pips into shield and sit while we wait for the collectors to do their thing. We'll slowly be regaining shield and we can begin to look for our next target. But we want to be able to regenerate as many effective hit points in that period as possible. So we can keep going for as long as possible. Core internals. I have a reactive service armor. You don't need this. This is a shield tank. Um, I had this on because the previous ver version of this ship was a armor tank version. So I had this already engineered and fitted to the ship. You can make do with just keeping the stock lightweight uh, armor. And then adding heavy duty, maybe reflective plating or heavy duty uh, or sort of deep plating here. That's that's really up to you, whatever you like. Of course, in this case, as you can see here, I've kept my reflective because I had it already. And I've gone heavy duty and reflective plating. But again, you do not have to fit this module. For the power plant, a 6A power plant with overcharged thermal spread. Not too many surprises here, as you can see, plenty of power um, to spare. Thrusters, 6A thrusters, nothing special here. Dirty drive and drag drives. Frameshift drive, also pretty standard with increased range and mass manager. Life support is D-rated and lightweight for, for extra maneuverability and jump range. The power distributor, charge enhanced super conduit. You could go weapon focused if you really wanted to, but I am swapping the pips around quite a bit. So I've just gone charge enhanced super conduit for getting that maximum recharge. And finally, the sensors are also relatively low with D-rated sensors with lightweight on it. Then, of course, we come to the optional terminals and we're going to start out with some biweave shield generator, a 6C biweave shield generator. Thermal resistance to balance out those resistances and then fast charge, as I talked about earlier. Let's get this much recharge in as we can so we get those effective hit points back while we're sitting looking for next target and collecting the materials then i had a have a guardian shield reinforcement pack in the class 5 slot cargo rack in the class 4 slot for 16 tons of cargo that's for all limpets then it's just a ton of guardian shield reinforcement packs just a lot of them and then i have a 1b collector limpet now this might seem a little on the low side only having a 1b it's not that often your collector limit will survive more than one fight. More than often you will lose your collectors before you um, 
Um, before you manage to kill the next target, whether that's due to uh, to point defense or, or splash damage or I don't know. The collectors just have a tendency to die a lot. That's why I'm only running one collector. It takes a little bit longer to, to collect the materials, but I'm not running out of limpets um, as quickly as I otherwise would. Another option you have in terms of things you can change is you can swap around the cargo and that's this uh, shield reinforcement pack. So you can swap this out to a class 5 cargo rack and then get 32 tons of cargo and then swap this down. You can actually see that the, the, the shield reinforcement increase between the two is relatively low. I mean, a class 4, class 4 here is 182, while a class 5, oh, sorry, yeah, 182, and this was this 215. So it's like you're only losing like 30 something shield hit points, um, raw shield hit points, I should say, but still, you're only losing a relatively small amount of shield hit points from swapping these two around, but you double your cargo. So that is a very, um, valid option to go for and especially if you decide to drop one of the class 4s and then fit a class 1 down here instead and then fit a class 3 collector and one of the class 4 slots so you get two active limpets then I would definitely recommend you swap these two around so you get double the limpets because you're now also launching double the limpets and will also therefore lose them at twice the rate. But that is the build. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give a like, subscribe and until next time I will see you guys in space.